Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hi, everyone. This is Tammy Patzer, and I'm really excited to introduce today's guest, Dr. Usha Manta of Verb Weight Loss and Laser Aesthetics in Upland and Pomona, California. Dr. Manta, of course, she's an MD and she is a diplomate in obesity medicine and she's board certified. And one of the things that we're going to be talking about today is something that you've heard about in the news, intermittent fasting. So it's something that everyone is like, is intermittent fasting for me? So I want to get right into it and ask you, Dr. Manta, if intermittent fasting could be for me and tell me a little bit more about why you would want to fast intermittently. So what is it and what are the benefits? Oh, thank you, Pat, um, Tammy, for introducing me so beautifully. And um, I'm Dr. Usha Mantha, and I would love to talk about intermittent fasting. Um, the reason I want to talk about it is because intermittent fasting, as it says that it is intermittent, so you are allowed to eat food in between, which is the beauty of it. And it's actually, it's a planned observance of regular periods of no solid food intake, uh, and this is for your either weight loss benefit or for your um, medical health benefit. It's um, There are um, things that are called extended um, diet or extended um, fasting. So this we are going to concentrate on intermittent fasting today. Why you should it do intermittent fasting? And of course, Tammy, you can do it. I have actually been doing intermittent fasting for the last 30 years. And it occurred to me that um, because... I am in good health and I feel good and I feel well. So I realized that I need to come out and share this. Intermittent fasting, believe it or not, has been practiced for millions of, by millions of people for thousands of years and by different religions. Take it for example, Christians observe Lent. They do give up a certain food. Uh, Muslims observe Ramadan for a whole month. They actually fast. And similarly, Hindus fast every week, once a week, two times a week, even if it is for religious reasons. But the benefit of the weight loss and the benefit of medical, um, you know, improvement in your medical health remains. So this is why intermittent fasting is basically planned avoidance of food intermittently so that your body can actually reset. So that's what intermittent fasting is about. Um, how does one differentiate intermittent fasting from starvation, which is a very big question. Lots of my patients ask me. And starvation mode is when the patient, when one has to fast because there is no food available or avoidance of food in absence of availability. In that starvation mode, the body goes into a stress mode. Whereas in intermittent fasting, you actually regularly plan not to eat solid food. And the hormones that go into your body or rise in your body secondary to intermittent fasting is more planned. Your brain is accustomed to it. The brain is ready to do what you want your body to do. Whereas in starvation mode, you actually go into a stress mode because the food is not available. So that I just want to distinguish between those two. Well, that's really interesting because a lot of times people are worried about, oh my goodness, If I don't eat for, you know, three hours, is it going to throw my blood sugar off? Is it going to hurt me? So you said a couple things that I'm curious about. Number one, you talked about weight loss and you also talked about the hormones involved and regular health benefits. So if, if I'm looking at it for a health benefit and not necessarily weight loss, what are some of those health benefits? 
So thank you for asking, Tammy. Again, that's a very, very important question because um, very recently intermittent fasting has resurged. The reason is that is now there is definite evidence that it actually has definitive medical benefits. And in fact, Obesity Medicine Association has actually endorsed um, us to do intermittent fasting. Let me tell you which are what are the medical health benefits. So first of all, it helps you to lose weight. Secondly, it reduces your blood sugar, your cholesterol, and your blood pressure is better controlled. And all these are done, and then you have better you know, heart health and stroke because for heart and stroke, heart disease and stroke, the three main pillars are your blood pressure, blood sugar, and your cholesterol. And intermittent fasting actually reduces all three of them. And then it causes weight loss, which is beneficial. It also, believe it or not, reduces your aging process. Let me explain how. So during intermittent fasting, studies have shown that you produce more growth hormones. As we age, our growth hormones are slowing down. And as we age, we definitely want you to consume less food because then you can maintain higher amount of growth hormone in your body. So you can imagine intermittent fasting is amazing because it actually will reduce your slowing process. So all of you who want to do not you know, age fast, you have to do intermittent fasting. Another good thing that intermittent fasting does is your brain health. So in the body, there are two types of processes happening constantly. Our body is evolving all the time. There is one in which all these cells that are abnormal or precancer or are actually aging, they are doing their process by what is called as um, apostosis, apostosis. And in that process, actually cells are dying. And then the body has another process called autophagy, which is during which the, actually the cells are consumed. We remove those cells from the body. So intermittent fasting resets your immune system to increase this process. So now we know there are studies to do showing that intermittent fasting is good for your brain health because brain has many, many active cells. And also, so it can help reduce your incidence of, you know, uh, risk of Alzheimer's and dementia. And also the last and most important benefit of intermittent fasting is in cancer prevention. Again, these abnormal cells, they have to be absorbed by the body and intermittent fasting actually increases this process of uh, absorption of these abnormal cells. So you can imagine in summary, it, call, it helps you reduce weight, blood pressure, cholesterol, your blood sugar, your treatment of, you, it, it is a treatment for diabetes. It's good for your brain, for your memory health, for your cancer prevention and aging, which is amazing, right? And intermittent fasting is simple, flexible, inexpensive, and almost 100% time it works. Well, everything that you're talking about from, I'm thinking about myself, for example, uh, you know, I'm thinking, well, if I can age slower, that would be good. If I can have a higher quality brain function, and if I could lose weight and not and decrease my risk of heart attack or stroke or other health issues, that really would be phenomenal. I had a question related to um, like different diets. Um, you, right now, for example, the keto diet, Mediterranean diet, the DASH diet, just uh, being a vegan, being a vegetarian, being a meat eater. Uh, how does it work, intermittent fasting work? Uh, um, should I be on any particular diet? I think you mentioned earlier that you could eat pretty much whatever you want, but what does that mean? So that's, an, again, a very good question because whenever we introduce a new way of eating, we always have questions. How do we start? How do we you know, incorporate? Because remember, Tammy, eating is not just a, an event. Eating is a social issue. 
It is an issue of availability. You're so, you know, what have you grown up eating? You know, if as a child, whatever you were fed is what you are eating and your brain is only looking for those food. And on the top of the whole palate is the palatability. What do you like? You can, you and I both know that in the same household, with the same mother cooking for the same siblings, everybody has their different tastes. And not only that, when we actually grow up, we def develop different tastes, we move out of the world, you know, different parts of the world. So eating food is a very complex mechanism. And on top of it all is the, our brain, our psychology, our so, you know, mental status. So intermittent fasting fits in absolutely beautifully in this whole thing. Let me explain why. Because when we talk about keto diet or DASH diet or the Mediterranean diet, these are the things that these are the choices of the pro, uh, macro nutrients that we are suggesting to you. You should eat, you know, carbohydrate, protein and fat in these proportions. So those are actually your actual proportion of different macronutrients. Intermittent fasting is actually a method of doing it. Does that make sense? That is a food choice and this is a method. Okay. So now in this method, you are going to bring those into your method. So here's an example. For example, the very common one I, you know, when I start talking to my patients about intermittent fasting, I start with saying, have you heard about it? And then I come out and I say, have you tried anything like fasting for so many hours? And they say, oh, no, I'm on this diet. I'm on Mediterranean diet. And I'm like, even better, because intermittent fasting is just a way of life. If you think about it, it's a way of life we are teaching. It's, it's a behavioral thing we are teaching them. So now, if for example, you are taking Mediterranean diet, which is, by the way, amazing diet. Mediterranean diet is all plant-based food, all your I mean, non-preservative, non-pesticide, non-type you know, of food, natural food. So, and whole grains are the main stay of Mediterranean diet. And of course, olive oil and your fruits and your nuts and your vegetables are mainstay of Mediterranean. Of course, you should be doing the Mediterranean diet into your intermittent fasting. You will eat your solid food which is either your Mediterranean diet or your DASH diet. If you have high blood pressure, you will have reduced salt. You will do your, um, your diet during the time you eat. However, the times that you actually go into the fasting mode, you will be doing what we call as fasting fluids. Now, during the fasting fluid, if you have high blood pressure, if you have high cholesterol, so if you have, for example, high blood pressure, you don't add added salt. If you have high cholesterol, we would not suggest you add extra fat to it, right? Because that's the difference, again, between keto diet and intermittent fasting. Though keto diet is very popular at present and goes hand in hand with intermittent fasting, but if you do suffer from high cholesterol and you are you know, being told by your physician that you have to reduce your cholesterol, then you cannot increase your fat content to moderate to high content as suggested by keto. So you have to balance. You have to balance. But intermittent fasting is a method of consuming food. What food you should contain, eat depends on your DASH, your Mediterranean choice or your keto choice. Does, is that kind of clear, Tammy, what I'm trying to come up with? Yes, because basically what you're saying is it, it, you choose what you're going to eat, the foods you're going to eat, but it, intermittent fasting is more about the timing yes. of when you eat. And then you mentioned also the, the things that you drink. Before we get into that, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about some of the myths that, that I've heard about intermittent fasting. For example, I've heard that you, if you're going to do an intermittent exercise or intermittent fasting, that maybe you should avoid exercising. Uh, another myth I've heard, um, or or some people are talking about, oh, if you do intermittent fasting, your muscles will waste away. Um, is any of that accurate or true? 
Okay, so let me, um, that's an amazing question because I would definitely like to want to talk about the myths about um, intermittent fasting. And I want to give you a scientific basis of why they are not true. So let us start with the very top one. So intermittent fasting basically is that you would avoid eating solid food for a certain number of hours. The most common one is about 18 to 20 hours, but we do suggest one starts at 10 to 12 hours and gradually add up. It's typically done two to three times a week. However, there have been studies to show you can do intermittent fasting up to five times a week. And if you do for more than a week, it's called extended fasting. So during intermittent fasting, during the time you actually consume your solid food is when you will be eating your type of diet you choose. And during the time you are actually fasting, you are only consuming fluids that we can talk about a little bit later. Are those the fluids that are going to sustain you? Now, the number one question or myth is that hunger, I'll be hungry. Okay, number one. So hunger, I want to explain, is a learned phenomena. Our brain has a center which has the, you know, which, stim- which is stimulated by eating and brain pretty much tells the stomach that when the hunger should, is done and satiety happens. Stomach though does not know what type of food is put inside the stomach in order to stimulate the brain hunger center. So whether you eat 3000 calories or 300, 400 calories burger or you put fluid, which is about through three, four ounces, the stomach will distend and tell the brain, I'm full. Here's, so hunger is a learned phenomena. Hunger does get better after the first two and three times you do the intermittent fasting, and that is proven. And I am the proof of it because I do intermittent fasting two times a week, and I'm perfectly fine. So in the morning, I do make sure I am taking enough fluids. So hunger is not a problem because hunger improves after two to three days. That's number one. Number two, people worry about their blood sugar. Blood sugar does drop during the intermittent fasting, but that is a therapeutic effect we actually want because we are treating our diabetics who are not losing weight by just reducing their calories. Reducing the calories or putting yourself into starvation mode is not the way to lose um, weight or to reduce blood sugar. So when intermittent fasting we do, so blood sugar does drop. However, we do suggest that if you are a person who's not diagnosed by di- with diabetes, your insulins are running normal with normal sensitivity, then your blood sugar will not drop enough for you to, you to cause any major side effect. So you are, because you're still consuming fluid, So you are able to add a little bit of, you know, added salt or sugar to your fluid in order to maintain your blood sugar. So dropping blood sugar is not an issue with non-diabetics. Let's talk about diabetics. So the diabetics who are taking medication and specifically if you are taking more than one or two medication, if you are taking insulin, you definitely want to talk to your your physician, whether it is a primary care doctor or an endocrinologist, and let them know that you are embarking on this intermittent fasting journey, they may suggest that you alter your medications, you adjust your medications. I just started a patient yesterday. She's supposed to call me and text me and let me know how she's doing in the first few times because she's not afraid. She's actually, doctor, I heard about this. I want you to do this for me. So I am doing it. We have given her everything written down. She's going to follow it. And once she gets used to, she'll be okay. So the blood sugar dropping is what is a desired side effect. This is what we want. We want to bring the blood sugar down in diabetics. But if they are taking medications, they just have to consult their doctors. This is another precautionary thing. If you are diabetic, taking medicines, your blood sugar drops too much, eat. It's very simple. Intermittent fasting is most flexible thing out there is. We do not suggest that you go into a very low blood sugar mode. We suggest you just eat something. Keep your food around and you eat. If you did that, even then you will still get the benefit. So that's number two. Number three is like you asked about muscle. I really want to go into this one a little bit more because everybody's afraid of it. But like I explained earlier that during intermittent fasting, the way the body hormones, adrenaline and growth hormones and all these work, 
we actually are the best if we can exercise during fasting. During fasting, when we work out, our muscles and bone, that is a lean body mass, actually increases. Tammy, I don't know whether you know, I didn't know when I was doing this journey, I knew and I'm learning a lot. Athletes, I believe, athletes work out during the fasting hours. They actually do intermittent fasting. They go out and do their intense workout during fasting and so on to build more muscle and lean body mass. Okay, so that myth is really a myth. If you are fasting, if you are taking your fluids appropriately, yes, you can go out and exercise. So that is your hunger, your blood sugar, your lean body mass. So these are the top ones. And all of these are actually now getting more and more popular and people are doing it. So all these myths are now not myths anymore. Well, that's really, I'm glad that you addressed all those things because just like what you said, I think it is important that people do talk about these things with their medical provider, with their doctor, so that they can understand that all of this is based in science and that, you know, when you're talking about intermittent fasting, you're not talking about, you know, going, you know, like you said, you're not going to starve to death. You actually have your fluids and then you eat during a certain time. Can you talk a little bit more about what the fluids are that you can consume when you're fasting? So, yes. So let us talk about any fluids, like uh, whether it is your tea, your coffee, your iced tea, your green tea, your um, you can take chicken or beef bullions or chicken broth. Um, all of those will count towards your fluids. Now, like I said, if you are feeling very, very low blood sugar, you can add a little bit of you know sugar of any kind or even some honey in it. Um, you can make it a little bit more uh, palatable. You can use any amounts of this. What we do not want is to um, use a lot of calories in your uh, fluids, but any of these fluids are doable. In fact, yesterday, because my patient was little apprehensive, she has not done intermittent fasting and her blood sugars are running like 160. She's on two medications, insulin, She's gaining weight and she was crying in my office, literally. She's like, I've been to endocrinologist even and um, their PAs are telling me to increase insulin, Dr. Mantha. And I'm like, okay, fine. Now we both are going to embark on this journey. You're going to, she is my patient. She went away and she's now back. So this year I'm doing one-to-one patient. And I told her, I actually gave her soup from my office in which I actually, we have these soups, which has 15 grams of protein. It does have a little bit extra salt, but I gave it to her and I said, look, if you do get hungry, if your salts, if your sugars drop, this is what you're going to take. So the beauty about intermittent fasting is you are not forced to do it. You are very flexible. It's easy. It's your own food. It's what you like. You're not buying any food from outside. You're not, um, you know, there is nothing artificial about it. It's as natural as one can do anything about their health. So, um, so yes, they can have some soup if, it, if it's necessary. But beauty of it is for 10 hours, 12 hours, Tammy, people do it and they don't even know they're doing it. Well, well that's interesting. For example, um, that takes me into the different lengths and types of intermittent fasting because I've been thinking about it do you count the time that you're sleeping as part of your fast? Yes. So le- yes. So the common ones which I start is um, intermittent fasting. I like to start it for 20 hours. Then I add it to 30, 32, and then to 40. So here's an example. For example, today is Wednesday. And uh, today morning, like I had my breakfast, I will have a light lunch and then maybe have an early dinner by 5, 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. We are done. Tonight after 5 p.m., I'm only going to consume fluids if I need to or want to. Till tomorrow, that is Thursday, I skip the breakfast. I skip the lunch like at 12, but I will eat something at about 2 o'clock. 
So we are talking about from five today, not till five tomorrow, but till two or three o'clock. I will have a proper, you can call it a lunch or an early dinner. I'll do that between two and three. And then tomorrow night at about six o'clock, I might eat another dinner, proper dinner. Then I will eat a regular breakfast on Friday morning, a regular lunch, and then a regular dinner, but early dinner at about five o'clock. Then I will fast again. So does that make sense? So you, you fasted for 22 hours between today and tomorrow. Then you will be eating a full day of Friday. You will just eat normal. And then Friday afternoon, you will start again for Saturday fasting. Yes, I, I understand. So 22 hours fasting. And during the time, so we, so we do have these studies to show we should have breakfast every day. We should have lunch and early dinner. But the problem is people are eating a lot. In this myth about we have to keep our metabolism going, we are eating a lot. When we are eating five meals a day, and remember, whatever we put in our mouth is energy. It's energy. It has to do something. This food has to do something to the body. And we know from our day-to-day living, from our experience, when people eat more, they do grow more. So, and definitely there are different types of calories, which I have actually, you know, done another time I have spoke about. We don't necessarily call it a good calories and bad calories, but where do we get this energy? That energy, is it coming from fat calories? Is it coming from good protein calories? Depends in how the body processes it. Pro- body has to process the food that we put inside. So if we eat six times a day, no matter how little we eat, we are going to keep it somewhere. Because our body is efficient, but it's not that efficient that if you put too much calories, it can still lose weight. So this is why intermittent fasting, when we actually reduce the amount of food. Another thought, think about this. When we are constantly eating, we, are, we still have so much of fat in our body, the storage. We don't use our storage. We keep adding to it. And when we get to a point, we are either metabolically disranged or we are mass, like the body mass increases, our knees go, our hips go. Either it has a metabolic effect or a mass effect. And then we start trying to fix it. So intermittent fasting is going to prevent that weight gain. It actually can be done by anybody. Any age person can do it. If you want to start intermittent fasting, this is how you do it. Go to your physician if you want to. But any age, any time can start it. You don't necessarily need a full blood work unless if you think that you have either a family history of any significant metabolic diseases or you are on medications for blood pressure, seizure disorder, diabetes, cholesterol. If you are on medications, certainly you must see your primary care doctor or your doctor to see and suggest how you should do it. And um, then you should definitely have a blood work also. But there are studies to show within four weeks of starting intermittent fasting, your cholesterol normalizes. It does. Um, And it's it's, it's just, it's, it's a beautiful thing to do. And it makes, gives you more energy. All my patients who I have put on intermittent fasting have lost anywhere between 15 to 20 pounds in four weeks and six weeks. And by the way, Tammy, there is no study to show that if you do lose weights, not rapidly, but like on a, in a short duration, it's going to harm your body. There is no studies to show. Um, unless again, if you're metabolic syndrome or you have many medications that may have to be managed, but actual weight loss is not going to hurt your body. That we have proven from doing our major surgeries for uh, for, um, gastric bypasses and lap bands and gastrectomies that patients do wake up next day and they are not able to eat. So their blood sugars do normalize. Their weight rapidly goes down but they don't have any side effect from the weight going down. So if you do lose 15 pounds in five weeks, six weeks, perfectly fine. 
So that's another myth that you can't lose enough weight soon. There is no reason for being worried about that. Well, that that adds to the myth of people saying, if you, like you just said, if you lose rapid weight loss, that you'll gain it back. But you gain it back when you go on a diet and significantly reduce your calories, but you don't change your behavior. Correct. Because, very important, because we know when we do calorie restriction, so this is how it works. The body is very smart, very, very smart mechanism. So we, if we have, when we do a body composition analysis and we actually measure where does your weight lie, so we know, is it in your water, is it in your fat, or is it in your you know, muscles, right? So we know we can approximate it. Now we look at your fat weight, which is one of the things we look at when we do the body mass index or BMI. For all practical purposes, there are ways of measuring how healthy somebody will be. But at present, BMI, that is body mass index, that is how much is your weight in relation to your height, it still remains the gold standard. So if you have a BMI that is 30 and above, we call it obesity. And before obesity, between 25 and 30 is called overweight and below overweight, below 25 is, is a normal. Now, the BMI we measure by doing special machines on which you step up and then it, com- it gives us a body composition analysis. Another way of measuring how heavy one is or is, are they fat, uh, like obese or are they, is their fat weight going to hurt them is to look at the actual fat weight. So 30% is the thing. If someone has 30% of their body as fat weight, for example, if somebody weighs, um, say, um, 200 pounds and they have 50% half fat weight, so 100 pounds of their body is fat. 100 pounds of a body weight in fat means per pound of fat is 3,500 calories. So now they are dragging along 350,000 calories of energy on their body. Does that make sense? A lot of energy. And we're worried about losing our body when we fast. There is no way to lose the body when we fast. It may take up to three months of fasting to lose that fat. What happens when we just calorie restrict is totally calorie restriction reduces our metabolism slows down our metabolism. So when we do the you know, weight management, when I do the weight loss in my office, if I just put them on something to reduce their calories, they plateau and then bounce back. It happens typically. Whereas if I can actually make them eat and fast, eat and fast, during fasting, their metabolism goes up. Isn't that amazing? a natural way to increase your metabolism. There cannot be any other thing in this world. I I think you're right because I can think of all of the different things that, I mean, and it doesn't sound like it's hard at all when you think Mm -hmm. about it because most of the time you're not eating, you're asleep. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then I think that for someone like me, I get heartburn. So I'm thinking if I actually were to eat a earlier dinner, that would actually benefit me because then I wouldn't have the food processing right before I go to bed. And so there's a lot of other health benefits that I can see that just from going, oh, if I don't have all of that processing going on so close to the time that I do lie down, it would probably help me just in that one area. And then again, you're not telling me I have to give up foods that I enjoy eating. You're just saying, why don't you just not eat for a certain period of time? And then when you drink your fluids, don't add a bunch of stuff to add a bunch of calories and sugar to your, to your drinks, because that seems to be um, what most people do. Speaking of sugar, how important is that um, in, in the scheme of all of this? Um, because you talked about dia- diabetes, and obviously 
that that's related to sugar and carbs. So um, you mentioned the Mediterranean diet as being a good diet, but it, you mentioned whole grains. And I just and, and we'll talk about this another time, but I was just a little bit curious about how to choose the food. Say you're doing intermittent fasting and you just want to eat a normal diet for you. Um, is there anything that you should be avoiding? So that's 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 very important question and i think no intermittent fasting um you know lecture or a broadcast can be completed without talking about insulin absolutely absolutely and insulin is the biggest enemy of sugar or sugar is the biggest enemy of insulin so let's talk about it so what it is is that when we consume sugar, so when let's go back to carbohydrate because sugar is part of carbohydrate. Sugar is simple. Um, car, sh- simple sh- uh, sugar is simple carbohydrate. Okay, so let's take the three main macronutrients of the body are carbohydrate, fat, and protein. Okay, so actually there are studies and there are people who believe we do not need carbohydrates at all. We, because carbohydrate or sugar, which is part of carbohydrate, is only needed to burn calories. If X, so every time we consume sugar or carbohydrate, there is a very big thing happens in the body, and that is an insulin surge. Some of these food items, like under the carbohydrates, for example, simple carbohydrates will be your, your sugar, regular sugar, cookies, creams ice creams, and anything that has sugar in it, anything that you really like, (laughs) sorry. But all of them have a very, you know, um, glycemic index through which the blood sugar actually rises immediately in your blood, we can see. Immediately the glucose actually rises. That rise in your blood sugar causes insulin to come out. Insulin is the biggest guard in the body. And Everything that we are talking about, intermittent fasting, diabetes, it's all about insulin sensitivity. So when we consume sugar, there is a high peak of insulin. And what it does, it it actually preserves fat or gathers all the energy and hides it in the fat tissue. Okay, just hold this concept for a moment. We are talking about simple sugars. There is a complex sugar. Think about eating an apple. So the apple has sugar, but has a lot of fiber, right? Because by nature of apple being so big, you see the apple has fiber. Whereas sugar, a teaspoon, a teaspoon, it really melts immediately. So the apple is the complex sugar. When you take an apple, your blood sugar will still rise, but not to the extent as much as to the pure sugar. So now the complex sugar will cause some amount of blood sugar rising and a slow release of insulin. The insulin amount that is released in comparison to the pure sugar will be much less and insulin will not cause all this energy to go and hide it in the fat. Okay, so insulin is very important hormone and during intermittent fasting, we are bringing the insulin levels down because the insulin surge is what hurts us every time we eat sugar. So the proponents who say do keto diet, they want you to have very little amount of carb, a lot of fat, a moderate amount of protein and a lot of fat, which is, you know, common. So now what it does is when you don't have sugar in the food, then your insulin will not rise. You form something called ketones. Ketones are ketone. Um, they are in the body, ketone bodies, and they are actually coming from your fat cells. So now, instead of sugar, you are utilizing your own fat storage to create energy for the body. But if you keep putting sugar in it in our, your body, so we we feel like very energetic for a few hours and then we slump down. Because that insulin surge that has happened 
has moved all the sugar out to the fat. Whereas if you intake some protein, insulin is not coming out of their cells to attack the protein. It's more sustained energy. Think about this. So what does sugar do? Sugar increases your, um, you know, uh, attractive. Sugar is the number one thing that attracts. If you, for example, if you eat one piece of cake and you like it, you go and take another piece of cake. But if you eat a piece of meat, you are fine. You're like, okay, nice. this is full. This is good. You may go for it, but not as big as a chunk as you have done the cake. It's all brain game. So the brain likes sugar, but the body doesn't. And second thought that you were actually mentioning about overnight eating. What happens is by five, six o'clock, our digestive system wants to rest. Think about it. We lay down to rest, literally. We sleep. So the whole body is going to rest. If you start eating at six o'clock, and I have some patients who do something called as night eating syndrome. We can talk about it in another time. It's a big thing about itself. People travel all day. They come home at six o'clock. They front on television. And from six to 11, they consume more than 40% of their whole calories. That evening eating syndrome is very crucial because now the digestive system, which needs to rest overnight, you have put so much energy in your stomach. It needs to rev up. It needs to start the process instead of slowing down. Does that make sense? Our body is supposed to rest overnight, totally. So now we have revved it up. And in the morning, our blood sugar will be high. Blood pressure will be high. Our cortisols are high because we wake up with stress and we don't feel well. We don't feel well in the morning. So our suggestion in order to do intermittent fasting or any kind of thing, eat your protein early in the evening and be done. And eat a good protein diet if you can. It holds you through the night. So yes, intermittent fasting brings your insulin levels down. And it actually increases the sensitivity of insulin, which is absolutely helpful for diabetics. Wow. You really explained a lot of, of the, you know, I, I, the myths, the um, side effects, and then, of course, all the benefits of the intermittent fasting. Um, so I just wanted to just to wrap it up again so so that people understand um, if they need or would like to speak with you or find out more, how can they do that? Uh, do you have a website they can visit? Yes. Um, so I have my website, which is www.wervmedspa.com. My office number is 909-377-2939. You can call and um, I can, you know, sort of contact you back again to discuss, to get in touch with you. And, um, and my email is either info at wervmedspa.com, which comes right to my phone, um, or you can, um, in, you know, email me at drmantha at yahoo.com. So all these ways, um, we are connected with you. Okay, super. And thank you so much because I, I haven't had anything to eat yet today. So <laughs> that means that I can actually apply everything I've learned about intermittent fasting starting today. And I think I'm going to do that and I'll report back. So everyone, again, we've been talking with Dr. Usha Manta and she has Verb Med Spa in Upland, Pomona, uh, California. And again, she gave you all the ways to contact her. So definitely do that. And I suggest that if you weren't taking notes to re-listen to this show today, because you have basically the entire outline of everything you need to know about intermittent fasting. So before I let you go, doctor, is there anything you'd like to add? So just one thought, like last thing, is intermittent fasting, like I said, is simple. 
inexpensive, doable, 100% almost with 100% results. And it actually reduces your inflammation in the body. So all of you, those who suffer from depression, obesity, brain fog, um, uh, sleepless nights, you know, hormone imbalance, please try intermittent fasting. Um, and if you need more information, of course, you can always contact me at drmantha at yahoo.com. But um, just try it. Well, I definitely am going to do it, <laughs> not just try it. I'm going to do it because I think everything you explained, it was as if this is something you were speaking directly to me. And I know many of our listeners um, got the same message that I did, that this is something that we need to be paying attention to. So I really appreciate your time today. Thank you, everyone. This is Tammy Patzer. Go make it a beautiful day. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.